Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to excavate an ancient city and find the fabled sun power legendary flying machine. Dare you and your fellow adventurers step into the Forbidden Desert. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter, and today we are going to be looking at Forbidden Desert. It is a two to five player game. Now, this is kind of like a sequel. It's the, the previous one was Forbidden Island, and I enjoyed that pretty, pretty well. I, I liked that quite a lot. So I was intrigued. Had they upgraded this one? How do they make this different? Is it bigger? Is it better? Well, let's find out. <laughs> let's take a look at what is in the box and when i say box i mean tin it actually comes in a tin which is kind of cool the only problem with a tin is that it is quite difficult to store next to your other games that are obviously square boxes but hey that's a very minor point so let's take a look at what you get in the tin now you get quite a lot you get these uh, tiles these sand tiles that are double-sided that have various different locations on them that you'll be discovering throughout the game you also get these little sand markers that are double-sided one's got a little x on the side and one is uh, just blank and it's lighter and you also get the uh, the markers for the players you get six of those and you get their corresponding cards and each character, each player will be to playing a different character. So you've got an explorer, a meteorologist, a navigator, an archaeologist, a climber, a water carrier. Probably very, very valuable because we're in the desert. You also get storm cards. You get a, a big bunch of those and they've got various different kind of events that happen throughout the game. You also get equipment that you can discover as you keep digging in the sand for various different things. And they're quite cool, nicely designed, got a little sort of steampunk feel to it. And you get a uh, the uh, sandstorm marker and this is uh, denoted by uh, this little clip here about where the sandstorm how strong the sandstorm is so that's kind of the difficulty factor and that goes up and up during the course of the game and of course you get the legendary flying machine look at that that's pretty cool nice big chunky kind of plastic model nice detail on that and you get the parts that go with it and these are the parts that you'll actually be finding throughout the course of the game you've got an engine a propeller and you've also got some sort of sundial which I guess, yeah, if it's, uh, if it's sun powered, then you'll need a sundial and some sort of uh, crystal type <laughs> object here. Who knows what that's for? So how do you play the game? Well, what you do is you will be handing out the cards. You can do them randomly. I guess if you want, you could pick who you want to be, but it's more fun to do it random. And then each player will get one of those. I should say it's a two to five player game. So they give you an extra one There's six there. And uh, what you do is everyone will get a little sort of clip arrow and they'll clip that onto the side of the canteen. And that denotes how full your canteen, how much water you have. And yes, you've guessed it, there will be ways that you'll be losing water throughout the game. So each player gets one of those. Then what you do is you will shuffle the storm cards. You will also lay it out like this. So you lay these tiles out five by five grid. And there is a nice little illustration in the rule book that denotes how you actually lay it out. They're actually randomly laid out, but you lay them out with the sand side up and you actually have the compass uh, all facing, all in the, in the same position. That just keeps it all nice and neat. Plus you then will have a space in the center here. Now that's theoretically where the sandstorm is. So you know where this sandstorm is all the time. Plus you do get these markers, as I say, and you lay them out, first of all, when you first set up the game in this diamond formation. So how do you play the game? How does the player have its turn? Well, what you do, it does say in the rules that the thirsty, thirstiest player goes first and uh, as you can tell I'm quite thirsty at the moment so it would actually be me who knows how you determine that but obviously maybe you could arm wrestle if if you know there's a disagreement so let's say I'm thirsty and I really really want to go first so what you do is you put all the people that are playing onto the crash site because the theme is that you've crash landed you're all going to try and find this machine anyway 
but it's just going to be harder for you now because you've crash landed presumably all your supplies apart from water has been burnt up in this crash and so you're at the crash point which also doubles up as the launch pad because when you find all the bits you'll be putting them all together and then getting back to the launch pad that's the object of the game and that's actually what you have to do is to discover all the bits for the flying machine get back to the launch pad and everybody has to do that so how do you do that well the first person will uh, have a choice of what to do they have up to four actions they can take they can move they can clear sand they can excavate and also you can pick up a part now you don't have to do any of those you can just do nothing on your go there might be in a situation where that's better to do nothing i've not come across that yet and you can do one two or three of your actions so let's say for example i want to clear sand then i will then clear sand next to where i am so i've got two options here so i'm blue so i'm going to say clear this one so you simply then put that back on the pile and then I want to move, so I would then move one to any adjacent square. And then if I wanted to, I could excavate because there's no sand on top of it. So then I would simply flip that over. Oh, look, it's a well. And I already knew it was going to be a well there because there is a little uh, blue symbol there that indicates where the water is. So that's a well. And obviously, as you can imagine, that's where you can then fill up your canteen if it's starting to get a bit empty. So once I've done that, if there was a part on that bit, I know there isn't, then I'll be able to pick that bit up as well. And that would be the end of my four actions that I could do. But then what you do is the second part to your go is you will then take a storm card. And you simply, these are shuffled at the beginning, by the way, you will simply take the first one and you read what it does. Now, in this case, it's saying to move the sandstorm two. So you would line it up and go, oh, look, two that way. And now the sandstorm is here. So the tiles keep moving around because everybody at the end of their action phase actually has to take a storm card. And then that gets put in a discard pile. And that is a go. Now, how do you find the actual flying machine parts? That's quite simple. You will keep excavating pieces of, of uh, tiles and so you would be flipping them over and you're trying to find it. Oh, look at that. What a coincidence. I found one half of two tiles that will tell me where a part of the flying machine is. In this case, this one is the engine, so it tells you what it is there. It's also got a nice little illustration on it. And it also has a series of arrows to say whereabouts it's going to be. So that's why you need the corresponding piece. So you carry on playing the game, you're excavating, you're clearing sand, and you happen to find the other one. Oh, look, it's here. So I know where the piece is now, you all do, because this has also got a set of arrows and it tells you what it is. So then you simply look along and where it intersects, that's where the piece is. So you follow it here, and it will be here because obviously that arrow points here. So you now know that the engine will be here. And obviously you carry on taking your turns. And when you get here, you have to clear a piece of sand in order to flip a tile. It has to be clear of sand. So obviously when you get here, you flip it like normal. You will get the engine piece and whoever's landed on there actually gets that piece. And then you'll also do what else that tile says. Now in this case, it's saying you get the gears and gears mean equipment and there's various different equipment as you can see that will give you special abilities that you can play how do you so that's how you kind of play the game now what you do is once you've found all the pieces as i say everybody needs to get back to the launch pad and you've won the game hurrah but of course you can lose the game and there's three ways that you can do that if any one player has their canteen reach zero you've all died, you're all dead, you've lost the game, boo-hoo. The other way is that if you get swept away, or sorry, I should say buried, because there will be cards here in the storm cards that say, put another piece of uh, sand down. Now, what that means is if that goes here, if, it get, if a tile gets a second one on it, you place it face with the X on it. And what that means is that 
tile is blocked, nobody can move on there until you've started to clear that first one off. Now obviously what happens is that could start becoming quite a uh, lot of sand on the board and it becomes harder and harder to dig for these pieces. If all of these reach zero and you have no more of these tiles, then again you are buried in the sand and that's the end of the game. And the last one is this uh, difficulty meter here. What happens is this uh, sandstorm meter, sometimes a card will say move this up one and you'll start moving it up. If it gets all the way up to here, then you are dead. And you've, again, you've kind of been buried in sand, I guess. And that is how you play the game. What do I think? I really, really did enjoy this. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it is a little bit um, difficult to set it up initially, you know, because it is quite a strange concept with tiles moving around. But once you get your head around that, it's pretty easy to, to master. As I say, it's a cooperative game, so you're working together. Now, there was that sense of co cooperative thing because you'll be using your uh, equipment cards to help each other out. You'll hopefully be giving them water and you'll be working out exactly what the best strategy is. Remember, you've got to keep clearing these sand tiles away because if they get to zero, you, you lose the game. So you might have somebody working on the sand tiles. You might have somebody desperately looking for the water, going and getting the water. And then you might have somebody actually trying to look for the piece of equipment or even piece of the flying machine and that I really found that quite intriguing that way that you can co-op there, there, there doesn't sit I don't think this game will suffer too much from an alpha gamer who tries to dictate what everybody should do because obviously it's your own go and you can still defy the rest of the group and say well now actually I'm going to be doing this so I did find that very very enjoyable my only my only reservation about the game was what's the playability like how often would i want to do this yes there's going to be it's always going to be random because these are shuffled and these are shuffled and obviously you're you know you'll be getting different characters so you could play each character because that would be different because you'd be playing a different special ability but after that i don't know how many times i'm going to be intrigued by this i've played it x amount of times already i'm relatively new to the game i had played its predecessor forbidden island and again i had that same feeling how often am i going to play this that said it's quick to play it takes about i don't know half an hour maybe an hour if you kind of taking your time but half an hour to 40 minutes so it's it's a light strategy game it's nothing too heavy and i'm sure that i will play it again it's just i don't know for how long i'll definitely be playing it the components are very well put together good quality card lovely illustrations the actual theme of it is pretty cool. It's quite a unique theme in that respect that you're digging for something. And it has that element of crisis because if there's too much sand, then, you know, you think, oh, no, we're going to lose and we need to quickly do this. So I can recommend this. Check it out. Forbidden Desert. <laughs> so that was Forbidden Desert. Hmm, interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave comments. We're on the usual social media stuff. You can follow us there on Twitter, YouTube, and obviously Facebook. Thank you once again. Remember, oh yes, always, always keep it unreal. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.